What's up, Doc? Is this your idea? <laughs> hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, what's up, Doc? <laughs> Welcome to our channel, Pause on Animation. In today's podcast, <laughs> we're covering Looney Tunes back in action. This wonderfully and brilliantly wacky film shows Daffy and Bugs getting involved in a globe-trotting trip with two Hollywood workers to find the mythical blue monkey. Yes, and it's chaos. Before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and occasionally some future podcasts and welcome to pause videos. Absolutely. This is one of Rascal's favorite movies. Time. Yes, it's one of the ones where I watched it several times in months. No, it was every day for over three months. I said several. So. Several. No, a gazillion. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was more than, it was about three months or more. Every single day. <laughs> yes, that's why I remember this so well. And you know what? Surprisingly, there was a point after that, didn't watch it again for many years. I watched it enough for years worth. <laughs> but when it started trending on YouTube for a little bit, people started doing spoofs of it. There were memes and stuff. It was sort of making a small resurgence online. And people were saying, yo, this movie was ahead of its time with all the humor and stuff because it really hit all the marks. So I said, okay, let's rewatch the movie. We haven't seen it in a heck of a while. And this movie still holds up. It still holds up. It's still hilarious. It's still one of the best Looney Tunes things ever made. And I know you have this, and you have the two Space Jam movies. And I know Space Jam is considered a guilty pleasure because it's kind of cheesy, but I think that's good in its own way, and back in action is good in its own Absolutely. way. Absolutely. I think this movie is so underappreciated. And unfortunately, it showed at the box office. It was released November 14th, of 2003. And originally it was planned to open in the summer, but for some reason they pushed it to November. Right. And the budget for creating the movie was $80 million, but it only made $68.5 million worldwide. Yeah. So it's considered a box office failure. And before that, Warner Brothers was hoping to start a revitalized franchise of Looney Tunes media and products with the success of this movie. Right. Unfortunately, since it did not do well, they decided to produce Duck Dodgers TV series instead. Yeah, and people did enjoy that a lot. And then they didn't do another movie until Space Jam A New Legacy. Yeah, so it was a while before we even tried this again, and then we saw how that sequel went. It became the LeBron James movie. It's better than the sequel. <laughs> right. It's way better than the sequel. Right. So... People usually like to compare the two movies and say, oh, one's better than the other. This was funnier because so-and-so. To me, is the thing. They're two, they're both the same concept of a uh, anime live-action hybrid movie with Looney Tunes meeting the stars. For me, Space Jam, it knows it's silly. It knows it doesn't make sense. They know it's ridiculous. They know it's product placement. It's just silly, crazy fun. Don't take it too seriously. You're just having a, a blast watching how crazy it is. Back in action is more uh written is let's how do you put this it has way better comedy in terms of when you think out the jokes mm -hmm. it's smart humor yes very smart humor it's not just uh hitting people over the head blowing not stuff slapstick. up not yeah. slapstick not just hitting things to get a laugh out of you and just being nonsense when they make jokes and references right when they're making jokes and references it's really detailed it's planned out and you get how all the jokes work especially with all the james bond references with the the, the damian drake movies all the <laughs> parodies and stuff and one of the best scenes of movie when Bugs is a parody of Psycho. <laughs> and the whole thing is just him reenacting Psycho with her looking annoyed. <laughs> and it was so funny because they had the chocolate syrup. And I remember reading that that's what they actually used in the real movie. So it was like blood and black and white. And I was like, oh my gosh. That. <laughs> that is too funny. Yeah. But so much attention was paid to things in this movie that was so carefully done and written, yes. as you said, and you did mention that it was ahead of its time, because I think now if this were put out, it would be a solid hit. Yes, absolutely. And the story itself is still crazy. For this one, they kind of took the inspiration of Roger Rabbit, where cartoons and humans 
live together in one world and cartoon characters get the best work out of being stars in different animated movies and shorts and here is just all specifically Warner Brothers and Looney Tunes and I absolutely love that concept the only time it didn't work so well was Chip and Dale because they were trying to copy Looney Tunes and it just didn't work period say that for next time but for back in action I love how they set up that world and everyone just worked for Warner Brothers and for this one Daffy was sort of the lead in here because it was seen here that no one wanted to see Daffy Duck everyone wanted to see Bugs no one wanted to see Daffy and they were just straight forward no one likes Daffy (laughs) everyone loves he's a Bugs Bunny he's universally loved while Daffy's one of those angry guys in their basement (laughs) he didn't do nothing in (laughs) U-T-H-E-Y right and he's upset when he's always treated as the side thing, he always gets hurt. And he said, why is he always getting hurt in every single show and every single movie? He wants better recognition and everything. Like, we don't care. If you don't like it, you're fired. And <laughs> it's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. The whole thing still, like, he's this underappreciated worker. And I love how, you know, you've had this rivalry between he and Bugs for decades. Right. But in this movie, he comes to his defense, and he's like... Gotta get him back. Yep, he can't do the movie without him. Yes, and it was like, see, it's not like you think it is. They're friends like Tom and Jerry. Right. (laughs) And then you have for the two humans, you had uh, DJ Drake, who was played by Brendan Fraser, who also voiced the Tasmanian Devil and Tasmanian She Devil. Yes. And then you had Janelle as Kate Hudson, right? Kate Hawk. Kate Hawk. And she was really huge. Yes, and she actually ended up playing, both of them played the roles very well. You got, Drake was supposed to be sort of the naive, straight man type character that just goes from place to place, adventure, you got to be supposed to be. And she was supposed to be the tough as nails, takes no crap right. assistant, and she wasn't going to deal with Daffy and his because she was going to literally drag him out the studio, <laughs> <laughs> no matter what. And nobody was like, uh, I don't think you should fire him. <laughs> and some other major main stars were Steve Martin as Mr. Chairman. Yes. Heather Lockler as Dusty Tails. I love the name. I thought that was hilarious. Right. Joan, Joan Cusack was mother, like in the Bond films, instead of him. Right. His mother. And then Timothy Dalton, who actually played Bond. Yes. As Damien Drake. Yes. It was absolutely brilliant. And a lot of the dialogue in here they have for every character, it works so well that it almost makes you forget that One's anime, one's live action. They do the lines so well. It looks, it feels like they are in the same room and they are having this type of rapport with animated characters. The timing. Right. And two of the best lines in here, one from Brendan Fraser when he said he wants to be a stuntman, not security. Fraser. 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 Okay. And... He's a stuntman, and he, he wants to be a stuntman, but he's a security guard. And he said, did you see those mummy movies? I'm in there more than Brendan Fraser is. And then he's like, oh, I got, he's got to do all his own stuff. He's too good for stuntman. <laughs> and then the other one would be uh, Kate when they have Daffy. He's trying to let go. She has like an iron grip on him. And then Daffy switches, uh, I mean, Daffy switches plays with Bugs. He lets him go. And then... When uh, the guy tells her, uh, you know he's gone, right? And she tells him, what are you waiting for, backup? That <laughs> <laughs> was like that, like, dang, she's savage, she's savage delivery. <laughs> perfect timing, absolutely perfect. And it did help that a lot of the people in here were comedians. And Brendan had done comedy as well as drama in right. his movies. But he started in comedy. And you could tell by the time he got to this movie, after a few dozen, unfortunately, he had really honed his craft. Right. He said they were just spot on. Yes. And there were so many cameos in here that I'm just going to read a, a few of them quickly. Right. Because there's too many to remember. You had Don Stanton and Dan Stanton. They played Mr. Warner and Mr. Warner's brother. Yes. And they became famous by being in Moonwalker. The Michael Jackson movie. Oh, no they way. They were the two security guys that ended up turning into the rabbits that chased him in one of the songs. Oh, my God. You had Ron Perlman. Yes. You had um, 
Roger Corman, Paul Abdul, Jeff Gordon, yes, the race car driver, Matthew yes. Lillard, yes, Peter Graves, Michael Jordan as himself, and the cameo was done from actual footage, archive footage, but he still appeared in the movie. Yes. And then you had lots of our favorite voice actors appearing, including Jeff Bennett, yes. Billy West, June Foray, Casey Case, and Frank Walker. Yes, a complicated VA. Mel Blanc, of course, the master. Right. And as Sean says, so much more. So right. many more. Yes. And even when you get to down to the story itself, I know the comparison is they had a better storyline than Space Jam. Okay, both of these storylines for back in the Space Jam were crazy as heck. Space Jam had him playing a basketball game with a bunch of aliens with Michael Jordan to save the universe. Back in action was literally taking every single adventure movie going from place to place to place to place to find the blue monkey. They go from Hollywood, they go to Las Vegas, then they go to then they go to uh, the desert, they go to Area 52 at Walmart, <laughs> then they go to uh, Paris, then they go to Africa, then they go back to Acme Studios, and it's like, where the hell are they going? They're going all over the place. And then they had the the uh, plot twist with the villain. Yes. Who you kind of knew he was a villain, but they really showed you he was a villain at the end. Right. And a stupid one at that. Right. But it was it was just hilariously done. It was just perfectly orchestrated, perfectly executed. There wasn't a bad scene in this movie. No, you were just having fun the entire no, time. Bad right. You were, and it even had a line that several people when Bug said, I think when you go to the movies, you should learn something when you finish. And then Davy Shard do connect the dots. And it's like, oh, gosh, he's hopeless. <laughs> it's was, like, that says a lot now. <laughs> that was really odd about it not doing well at the box office is that critics actually gave it generally favorable view. Right. I and mean, then uh, two big people at the time, Roger Ebert and Richard Roper, yes. gave it two thumbs up, calling it cheerful, self-referential romp, blending animation and live action and non-stop quest for silly laughs, and Ebert called it the movie fun. It also was nominated for a Saturn Award for Best Animated Film, Annie Award for Best Animated Feature, and Satellite Award for Best wow. Animated or Mixed Media Feature, which is why it's really surprising it didn't do well at the box office. Yeah, and you don't, you don't know why. It was so... Favorable, you would have thought this would have made tons of money. If this had, we would have had more Looney Tunes movies like this now yes. and just more laughs. And the thing we get now, decades later, is Space Jam New Legacy. And they're trying again now with making Looney Tunes movies, but the last few content things for like TV shows, Jimmy Service have not been that great. They tried to recreate the old Looney Tunes cartoons, but they wanted a more violent and edgy and I mean like actually showing bones getting broken and being more graphic in them getting hurt which end up being hor gone horribly wrong they tried um a little kid show where they were construction workers for some reason they tried Looney University where they don't really learn comedy they just kind of do stuff and parody old 80s movies and they're supposed to have one called the day the earth blew up it's supposed to be a sort of musical animated musical movie and we're hoping that's gonna be good because the last few things have been just subpar and it's almost like they forgot how funny Looney Tunes could be because they're too busy trying to be careful not to step on toes and they're too busy trying to create the next trend and do something different but if it's not broken why well, fix it and Looney Tunes was not broken until they started doing reboots and rehashes. Yeah. And then it went to crap. Yeah. And that's unfortunate because I truly believe if they had left these sh the shows coming on TV instead of putting it on Boomerang, mm -hmm. and if they had done better promotion with Looney Tunes back in action, right? and if they had stuck with what worked well, they still would have been relevant. Right. Because a lot of people now say that it's not relevant. But it's not because of the quality of the comics or the, the I should say, the, the quality of the show itself mm -hmm. or the quality of the movies. It's because of the changes they tried to make right. that really didn't work. And I really had to think about that before I said it. So forgive me for the gap. I wanted to make sure I made it clear that it wasn't the content 
that came before the reboots that was the problem. It was the people thinking it needed a reboot. Right. And it didn't. Right. And this is one of those movies that you have to see at least once. If you don't watch it a thousand times, one time is enough to remember this hilarious crazy as heck film as you'll be laughing from the time it starts to the time it ends I have to pop my tongue on that one if you watch it once you're gonna watch it again right you don't have you to, have to you watch can't it just watch it once once you see it you're gonna want to go back and see all the things you missed yeah see the things that were so funny you gotta see it again and you will pick up and see things that you missed because we did yes, we somehow we were like We've watched this for over three months straight and we still miss things. Right. <laughs> so, if you haven't already, subscribe for updates, movie videos, and favorite anime series, anime shows, and all things animation. Yes, and if you've seen Looney Tunes back in action, let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you love it? Was it okay? Was it mad for you? Is it a favorite life for Rascal? Do you own it? Let us know what you think. If you haven't seen it, you're really missing out on top tier comedy and animation. And seeing Brendan before he got his Oscar. Yes. It's one of his best roles. Honestly, he was brilliant in it. And if you love him like I do, then you got to see this movie. And come back and let us know what you think. Right. And thank you so much for joining us for this special podcast. Yes. Because Rascal's wanted to do this for so long. Now. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic beat. Peace. <laughs>